I do, I do, I do, 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 introduction song. Hey, Doodlebugs, it's Mary Doodles. This is Artcast number six, because when I number things, it proves I can count. You are watching a real-time video with commentary. Later on, I'll be answering some of your cues, your questions. If you're just heading out the door or if you're into the time lapse -y kind of things, I'll put a link on the screen you're staring at to the time-lapse version of this video. That'll also be in the description below. But um, yeah, there's been some demand for more real-time videos. I feel like, uh, you know, you can learn a lot about drawing just by watching the actual process. You can also, you know, meditate to it. I don't, what else do you do? What do you do to these videos? Why? What is? What are we doing here? Universe, please give us the answer. Um, but more on that later. Uh, like I said, this is a real-time drawing of the most recent three marker challenge video that I did. Uh, the idea behind that is that you randomly select three different colors and then you make a drawing with them. Oh, quick disclaimer about my voice. Some of you might be noticing, she sounds like a little horse today. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that one. Um, I was hosting my sister. My sister is in town recently. We had a great time. And now I am enjoying tea and lemon. It's called healing. It's called gestures that last till 4 a.m., gestures the game. Anyway, more on these markers. I'm using Copic markers, specifically the colors B, B, blue 14, red 27, and yellow red 23. So Fortune decided that I should draw three perfectly primary colors um, that go so well together. If you're not familiar with the color theory, the primary colors are your foundation to every other color. So blue and yellow make green, red and blue make purple, blue or no, yellow and red make orange, and something, something purple. There's no theme song to that, so I had to write it on the fly. Aren't you impressed? Um, so I decided to combine these three colors with a suggestion for a tree transforming into a man. I figured that I could take the opportunity of using the primary colors to do some blending and mixing and creating other colors like green. Um, you, so the thing I notice anytime I do a video using Copic markers, there will be comments. There will be comments lamenting how much they cost. And I get that. I feel you. Trust me. I bought them. I know how much they cost. Um, that's kind of part of the reason why I'm just getting into them. I feel like, oh, when did I first start drawing with Copics? I'm going to say two years ago, maybe three is when I first started getting them. I dabbled in markers a little bit in high school. Um, I've gone through several phases of trying new materials and different things, which is always fun. I feel like if ever you're feeling uh, like you're not progressing, you know, take a leap outside of your normal routine. You know, if you hit a plateau, throw in a challenge. So I, uh, I've i used other brands of markers. I've used Prismacolor. That's another question I've, I've seen multiple times. People ask me, which do you prefer, Prismacolor or Copic or what's your favorite brand? And I cannot honestly say that I have surveyed the field enough to make a, a huge judgment on that. I've always had my eye on Copic markers because I've heard so many good things. And my friends who have them love them, uh, except for the price. Here's the thing that sold me on these, though. With Copic markers, you can refill them. You can purchase a ink cartridge. And the ink cartridge, okay, let's talk price. So the markers that I'm using... These are the, the sketch markers, and they got different kinds, different sizes. Um, so I'm just going to talk about these particular ones. <clears throat> they cost about, I'm going to say, here, let me pull up a website. Let's go to Blix, because that's the place that is closest to me. So Blix, Copic, Markers. And I'm going to say they're around like $6 a piece, these particular ones. And survey says $5.24 in America. So 
that's about how much they cost online list price. I don't know. You can get them at Joanne Fabrics or Michaels as well. You can find other online places and um, get them discounted. So that's how much the uh, individual markers cost. Let's look at the cost of a refill. And the refill will be about $6.29-ish. So um, yeah, they're about a dollar more for the refill cartridge, but the cartridge will fill up these markers 12 times. So it's kind of simple math. You can see, oh, I'm going to buy 12 markers at $5.24, or I'm going to buy, or I'm going to have the amount of ink for 12 markers at the price of two. Um, that's what sold me. Because I always, I you know, I buy an expensive marker and then you don't want to use it up because once you use it up, you just toss it out. Um, so that said, it's something that, you, you know, it works for the, the long run if you're really into it. But if you've never used markers before, you might, you don't know if you're into it. And so it's kind of hard to sample. That'd be really great if they had sample sizes so you could try it before you buy it. You know, get it like a little bit one. What I did um, to start building my collection is I started with uh, gray tones. They have neutral grays. They got warm grays. They got cool grays. So I picked some gray tone markers. That was about six, half a dozen markers to begin with and black. And I started playing around with those uh, while I saved my money for more color. And the thing about doing that, which I think is great, is that you don't have this menagerie of colors to distract you or overcomplicate things. You can focus on drawing with just gray tones and focus on the, the contrast and also the um, the blending of the actual markers. And then as you save up, you can add more colors. You can start with the primary colors and build your way out from there. You can also get sets of earth tone markers, flesh tone markers, whatever. And um, But slowly but surely build that collection. I've been building mine for, like I said, about two years now. So every time I go to the art store and I have an extra six or seven dollars, I'll get another color. It's um, it's a thing. It's woe is us. The materials, they're always gonna cost money, which is just a tragedy. Why can't we just get the materials first? Why can't we live in a commune of artists where we don't have to worry about shopping? Um, yes, that was my big rant about Copics, who's not sponsoring this. But hey, oh, I was thinking, I'm gonna tweet at them. Or figure out how to talk to them and be like, can we get some markers to give away to people? Because eventually I'm going to do a Copic marker tutorial once I feel more comfortable with them and know how to articulate the technique for using them. Um, so if you want to tweet at them too, let's open that channel of communication. And let's move on to questions. A lot of questions, a lot of deep juicy questions um the first one is from dark espion 4 ok who says mary i have a big problem oh dear i'm very imaginative i have tons of stories to tell people tons of games to make <clears throat> and i believe they all are truly good good but i can't do art hmm. and i really tried but it seems i'm just incapable of drawing anything without thinking, holy shit, this is awful. I will never draw anything good. I've been trying to find a teacher or anybody who can teach me a little, but all of them said, you just have to practice. After some time, I just sort of gave up and decided to actually try drawing something. And that's what I wanted to ask you. Where should I start? I have a drawing tablet. Awesome. So I guess art supplies like pencils and stuff are in abundance, infinite supply, but really, where do I start? I did some basic stuff like drawing mannequins in different poses, but it doesn't really seem to help, or maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, so first off, that's great that you have a tablet, so you have no excuse <laughs> to not practice. I always recommend, and you're going to hate me because I'm just going to parrot what these art teachers have said, but you just have to practice. But you just have to practice. And no, it. It's not fun hearing that, but there's just some truths. If you want to get better at something, you have to practice. If you want to lose weight, you have to 
watch your diet and exercise. If you want to go to the moon, you have to bring your own oxygen. I'm sorry. It's a pain to keep hearing that, but it's true. Um, Now, as far as what to practice, that's, you know, where do you start? That's a good, you know, the ultimate question. If you still have uh, communication with those teachers, or if you have trusted friends or other artists, either in real life or online, um, that you can show your work to, do it. Show your work to people who can give you some critical feedback and ask them, what do I need to work on? Also, you probably do have an idea of what you need to work on and what you want to work on. It sounds like you're doing mannequins and poses, so you probably are doing humans and figures. That's pretty popular. Um, So it's just a matter of continuing to work on those basics. Keep a sketchbook or keep a digital sketchbook with your tablet and make it a point to draw every single day. Draw every single day. It could be, you know, just a couple of really quick sloppy sketches or, and and here's the thing. When I say draw every single day, I'm not saying draw a picture from start to finish every single day. Uh, Do not do that. I'm saying work on certain drawing exercises. Look up gesture drawings. That's a great exercise. You can do still lifes. You can draw from reference photos or, but like elements of a drawing. Do not, I'm not saying do a full on drawing every single day. I'm saying do little sketchy things. Uh, The other day I came home and Dante was in the living room. He's a musician and he was sitting on the couch with his guitar and he was playing the Rugrats opening theme song. He was working it out though. He was going, da 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 I'm not going to annoy you with the whole thing. But, you know, it sounded like that. He's not practicing the song from start to finish and then looking back and saying, oh, what could I have changed? He's starting and stopping and working on little bits and pieces. And that's what your sketchbook be it a real one or a digital one, is for. You know, if you're working on drawing people, you'll have pages and pages of just working on eyeballs. You'll have pages and pages working on um, skeletal structure, you know, that, that little stick figure man. You'll have pages of gesture drawings. You'll have pages of shading or whatever it is that you're practicing with. Um, so be sure to make that goal. And do it daily and trust me, you will see improvement. It will take time, but you'll see improvement. And uh, uh, one final little note, um, attitude. Attitude is huge. Oh man, I'm going to go into like a positive thinking, preacher you thingy, so I got to go into hippie voice. Man, you just got to think positive. Uh, you say when you look at yourself, you think, oh, this is awful. I will never draw anything good. Try shifting that. Try telling yourself when you look at what you make, you can say, oh, this is awful. How can I make it better? You can tell yourself it's awful. In fact, you should be telling yourself when things are awful. You need to be honest and know where you need to improve. But don't let that be the wall that stops you. You know, when you need improvement, that only means that you have even more roads to go down. You have more things to do and you can do it um okay next question is from lis lis l-y-s-s for music who says hi mary i just wanted to know why you don't do commissions not to say that that's a bad thing i did my first real commission a week or so ago (gasps) congratulations and i didn't enjoy the experience too much oh yay i think it's partly because your patron wants something specific and you want it to be perfect. I mean, it's one thing to make art and then put it out into the world, even try to sell it if it wasn't great, because it is a learning process. But if somebody is paying for a specific idea that they have and they want translated into art, there's more pressure. 
So when I get commissions, I end up putting it off till the last minute because I'm scared that what I make isn't what they wanted or that they're unhappy with it. On the other hand, commissions are good for me because I'm 17 and it helps to fund my art and go toward paying for university. Anyway, I just wanted to know what your reasons were. Love from South Africa. Yay. Love from California. Um, the, shorts, the short answer to that is uh, time. It, I don't have the time these days. Making videos takes a lot of time. Making art takes a lot of time. And they combine those. And it's, you know, I hardly have the time to do the things that I want to do and the fun stuff too. And the hanging out, which I'm getting better at making that time. I don't know. In the future, some someday, I would love to make room to have some commission slots. Um, but as you say, when somebody's coming to you with a specific idea and wanting to give you money, uh, even today, like I do this professionally and I still feel like when somebody offers me money for what I do, it's almost a joke. I almost want to look at them and say, are you sure? Really? You find value in this? Okay. Just checking. Cause this is, this is real money, right? You're giving real money for what I do? Well, on me? What's the catch? Um, so yeah, I, I, I completely feel you on that too. I think a lot of artists and creatives hate the idea of commissions or working for someone else in a way um, where you, and it's not so much about full creative control, although sometimes it can be, but I think you put it so well that um, it's that pressure to make it perfect and to make them happy with it. Um, so that's a totally normal feeling. That's great that you're doing commissions though. I, at 17, that's a perfect time to start doing it. You are a young adult human and um, it sounds like you're really taking the initiative with your art career. And that's amazing. That's wonderful. Um, if anything, you know, continue with it and, uh, and protect yourself. Um, look up you know, what other artists are doing with making commissions. I don't know if you're familiar with deviantart.com, the website. Uh, there's a lot of artists on there who do commissions. So what I would recommend is if you haven't done this before or if yet, and uh, anybody out there thinking of doing their own art commissions, go check out and see what other artists are charging and see what their process is. A lot of artists have a process very similar to, um, you know, getting contacted by the patron, by the customer, client, whatever you want to call them, and then uh, coming to certain agreements saying, I will send you rough sketch. Once you approve that, I will send you a first draft or I will send you work in progress photos. And then basically the artist lays out at what point the customer is able to approve things. And then at what point is it the point of no return? and when you get paid. And a lot of times too, artists um, have a price for certain commissions and then that the payments are split up. So you get paid at the start of it, maybe in the middle and then at the end. And that way it, it's a way of protecting yourself from, let's say you get hired to do a painting, a portrait of somebody's cats and then you finish it and the person's like, oh, you know, I actually changed my mind. I don't want it anymore. A lot of times, like, you know, people kind of think of it like it's a fast food restaurant where you order food and then you're like, oh, I don't want that, so I'm not going to pay for it or whatever, and they think that's okay. And uh, with art, that's not okay because they ordered something and whether or not they use it, you know, they can't just return that time to you that you spent making the thing that they ordered and you wouldn't have been spending that time if they hadn't ordered it. So um, research what other artists are doing and how they operate with their commissions, what their steps are and their means of protecting themselves are, and, uh, you know, look into contract templates. I highly recommend that kind of stuff because tragedy can happen very easily with commissions. Not very easily. I don't want to scare anybody off from this because it, it's definitely something worth doing and totally um, easy to do now with the internet. So, you know, it's just like being aware of your surroundings on a dark night uh, in the city, you know, it's just basic, basic safety, first aid 101. I don't know. Next question is from Zephyr Lockhart, 
who says, I am a 15-year-old male and I have started drawing erotic things. I like how things is in quotation marks. Makes me wonder. Mm. As such, um, and I want to keep doing it, but there are people who are looking down at me saying that it's a shock. Like, what are, why are you doing this stuff? Then there are people who are like, yeah, keep doing what you love, but I'm really not sure what to do. When I try to draw clothing on them, I usually have the habit of making them nude, even with undies and stuff. And for a brief moment, I was thinking of doing my own comic book or manga on, with boy on boy, girl on girl, boy on girl, like really hardcore where you could see everything and all and it's making me feel weird now. Can you suggest what I could do? My drawings are all pencil based and they're all right, I guess. I've been motivated by other people, but I'm struggling on what it is I'm drawing for. I'm kind of... I kind of am developing my art style and I seem to do anything. I can't seem to do anything beside erotic drawings. Always thinking about it. <laughs> I am so sexy minded. Help me please. In all caps. I, I just love that last part. I'm not, I'm not laughing at you. No mockery here. Hey, you're 15 year old guy. The, this is so normal. <laughs> It'd be normal if you weren't doing this. I'm. So, it, it wouldn't be normal if you weren't doing this. This is completely fine and if you are in you're into drawing what you're into drawing trust me I went through a really heavy dinosaur drawing phase okay people judged mostly because I also walked around like a velociraptor but hey it's what I was into and I it was a chapter of my life and it helped inform my art later on it still affects me as a human um and the kind of things that I make and it was something that I was really passionate about and gave me a motivation to make drawings and to want to improve on drawing. So whatever it is that motivates you to uh, create and build your skill and your talent, um, use it, ride that, ride that wave. Use the flame to, to warm your boiling pot of skills. I don't know, weird metaphors. I will say it, it seems weird, like in America, especially when it comes to sexuality, people get really weird. Um, and especially when teenagers are involved. So uh, for the people who are kind of like weirded out, uh, you know, it's good to respect that, you know, but uh, at the same time, you know, keep doing what you do and do your thing well. Art is meant for expressing things and has always explored taboos like art and sexuality go hand in hand so well so bless you and more power to you for exploring sexuality through art and at a young age so do not shame do not be ashamed of that um if you mentioned comic books i don't know if you're familiar with um there's a comic by called lost girls by alan moore and i'm looking up because i can never remember the name it's gabby uh the artist is gabby gabby some somebody out there is like screaming it melinda gabby um alan moore melinda gabby lost girls it's a erotic romp of a comic book that i have not personally read but uh a couple friends of mine have uh and described it in great detail and it sounds amazing and tasteful that's the hard thing with erotic art i think you have this upward struggle of um being i'm gonna say being taken seriously on the one hand like it's really easy to get attention because hey sex sells like people will look trust me um but on the other hand you kind of have to like prove that you're not just like exploiting that aspect of it and that you're actually saying something with it so uh and it sounds like you are asking all these questions too and you're wondering what am i drawing for what is it i'm drawing for and i guess the answer to that is only you know or you will know so yes keep being your dear sweet self it's not weird <laughs> also oh i want to give a shout out to um uh, another YouTube channel for anybody else who's feeling like, why am I so sexy minded? Please help. It is um, Sexplanations. The YouTube channel is sexy, sexy. The YouTube channel is Sexplanations. Lindsay Doe is uh, the host and the face of the channel. And she's a, a, 
I'm going to say sexologist, sexpert, and uh, really, and this is not like silly talk, we're all adults here, or maybe not, but hey, we're all mature human beings, we experience things, or not, and that's all totally normal. Anyway, she's like, um, if anybody ever listened to Loveline back in the day, she's kind of like the Dr. Drew of that, she can talk about like sexuality in a very uh, warm version of the medical and uh, scientific sense of it. I don't know. It's beautiful, fascinating stuff. Um, you might be interested in checking out her YouTube channel. Uh, let's see. Let's do, I think we have time for one more question or comment. And this one is from Macabre Webb, who says, art and money is a complicated issue. It is. I think it would be great uh, content to be debated on in a podcast or a separate video. The pros and cons, personal experiences, and stories about friends' experiences. I've been a part of the deviant art community for about 10 years or so. Hello. I've met and talked to a lot of people doing various aspects in the art world. Students, freelancers, people who've gone into animation or their own business or own their own business based on their art. I don't think anyone should ever discourage anyone from taking on a career as an artist, but I do think I sh it should be always known that it takes work to be successful, and it's not an overnight thing. There's so many wonderful stories, but there are also cons. This could be said about any job, really. Anything you want to be successful in, you have to work for, and you have to put your heart into it. It can be done, but you truly have to want it. That is so beautifully said. Um, I mean, that sums it up anything can be done, but you truly have to want it. And if you truly want it, you will find a way to make it happen. There's a saying, uh, that old saying, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. And that doesn't make sense because I work every day and every night, <laughs> it seems. And so I'm going to revise that and say, if you do what you love, you will work all the time. Or if you do what you love, you will love to work. Oh, that makes, yeah, that's, that's more concise. Um, and to the point, this, yeah, this could be a whole other video. So I might um, bookmark this one for later. But yeah, overall, uh, it's a good point that you should never discourage people from doing the thing they want to do. I think a lot of artists and people who go into creative fields or aspire to be something like that, get kind of uh, warned away and say, you know, you'll never make money or it'll be too hard to do that. Or you got to be really talented and you're not buddy. And to that, I say, you know, if it's hard, uh, it, it's still possible because somebody else somehow managed to make it happen. If you're not talented enough to do it, then you build that talent and you get that skill. Um, but it, it, you know, they say it's hard and it's not as easy as go to school, get a degree, get a job, retire with monies. You know, a lot of art, art fields are not that easy. That said, um, as many of you know, if you're looking to apply to school or graduates, you know, over the last 10 years, it seems like that foundation of get a degree, be successful is now becoming questionable. Um, and ultimately, everything's questionable. I mean, we don't know if there will be a massive drought or cataclysmic event that then makes food super scarce in America. You know, a lot of times we're told things we want guarantees. And there are no guarantees for your future. So that should make you feel a little bit better, right? About going into a creative career. <laughs> and the cool thing is, you can apply that creativity that you so enjoy. If you want to be doing something creative for a living, you will be doing that in your skill or your thing, but you can apply that creativity to your business as well. Because, you know, let's say, you know, uh, Lise uh, earlier from South Africa is doing commissions. And it probably what happened, it wasn't like she went to a, a local fast art, like fast food shop where they just pump out art and then like applied and has a minimum wage part-time job doing commissions that probably doesn't exist. No, she, she had to make those connections. She had to come up with her system of doing commissions and she's going to be refining that as she needs to. Um, and, uh, I know when I was 
a teenager, my dad recommended that I go to some businesses, some local businesses, and offer to design business cards for them. So the the answers aren't, the jobs aren't always floating there in front of you. Sometimes you have to make the job. Sometimes you have to set things in motion. It's very difficult to be a freelance artist of any sort and um, not be a a go-getter, so to speak. You can't just sit back and relax and let the jobs come to you. Um, It's a matter of, you know, making those connections and networking and keeping your eyeballs open for opportunities. And when you see the opportunity, you got to jump on it. And then sometimes you got to set up opportunity for yourself. That is a whole other discussion. (laughs) There are pros and there are cons to anything in life. Personally, I think the biggest con is not doing the thing you like to do. My motivation is um, I have two loves. I have two passions in life. My first passion is making things. My second passion is not having to work in a job I don't want to work in. (laughs) And that's really what's been fueling this entire thing. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a whole load of questions, a whole load of ideas. And I am so sorry if I point anybody down the wrong path. This is, it's very interesting. It's sort of like turning into Dear Abby, advice time uh, sort of thing with these videos. I don't know how I feel about that because I don't feel like I'm an authority on anything But I I also, you know, I'll I'll take what experience I've gained so far in life and try to throw it out there and maybe help somebody. And who knows, like probably in, that's going to be fun, in 10 years to listen to these, I should go back, listen to these and slap myself for all the terrible advice I give and then maybe add on to that. I don't know. Uh, If you have any questions or comments or ideas or thoughts that you want to share, please leave a comment below. There's a whole comment box special designed for that. And um, we'd lo- I'd love to open up the discussion, see what you guys think, see what y'all are thinking. And um, if you love what you see and hear and you want to support this channel and you have the means to do that, I have a Patreon account. You can go to patreon.com slash Mary Doodles. And um, there's little prizes and goodies for you know, different pledge levels, you know, you know how it happens. NPR has done it first and it's become a thing. Um, oh man, you can see my, I'm being distracted now of my blue marker, which is running out of ink. It's running out of ink so much. I need to get a refill cartridge for $6 and 49 cents, 29 cents at Blix on the website. They too should sponsor me. Dear Blix. Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching this video. And uh, if you like it, like it, share it, all that good stuff. And if you're not subscribed, you can subscribe. I do uh, tutorials and real-time videos and that kind of stuff on Thursdays. Time-lapse fun art videos on Mondays. Keep being your beautiful self. Goodbye. still here. I am. Okay, I'm gonna go.